G'day, this is Chris and this is Flat Tank Journey. Welcome back to my shed. It's a winter's day and it's blowing a gale outside and it's meant to storm and hail. I've been hanging out in the shed this week. I've been turning wood, hence there's dust all over the bike. However, in the last little while, I have been doing a few jobs. I got on and fitted this front brake. And you saw last week's video, and looks like people didn't really like that because they didn't watch it and a few people unsubscribed. So, sorry about that, it is what it is. Um, I got on and fitted the front brake. And it ended up being just a little bit of a triumph. Now, it feels like I only had to drill a hole and connect the cable or connect the rod. That's not really what happened though, a bit more to it than that. Anyway, Hope you liked the video. If it's not too long, we'll get on to some lead casting. Otherwise, you'll see that in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs> Ever taken to your freshly painted brand new reproduction guard that you've got hundreds of dollars in? and drilled a hole in it. Bit traumatic. Anyway, here's what I believe is a genuine brake rod or a reproduction brake rod that actuates the front brake off these wedge tanks. I think it did other models as well. This piece screws into the forks and this piece, which has a socket in it for the nipple off the cable to go into slides inside. So the cable goes through a cable adjuster, which is very long, through that and into that and lets this slide up and down inside there. Kind of unique. So the cable adjuster screws in like that, and then this piece slides up and down. Hope you get the gist of it. The guard quite obviously needs a hole in it. So I've taken to drilling it out and you know, it is what it is. I may have to elongate the hole, I'm not really sure. But I've got um, two holes in it now, or one hole that I've drilled twice, I did 530 seconds because it was a brand new bit, 1564 because it was a brand new bit. So I'm picking odd sizes, and this one's 2364. Not going to bore you with all of this, but I'm going to drill a few holes. Guide holes doesn't take much to drill it out. So I started small and got bigger and bigger. And that's about the biggest hole I can put into it without taking the guard off. I think it's still too small, but we're about to see. with me I'm going to take a few parts off and then we'll have a look at this together and I might actually have to get your opinion on whether what I'm thinking of doing is a good idea. Hang on a minute. So there's the mechanism and there's the hole and one-handed I was going to try and get that through there. It doesn't go in properly. I'm not really sure why, I don't know whether I've got the hole in the wrong place or what I've got. But that doesn't work. I can't get past the guard stay with a straight rod. Not working. So, I believe I have the hole 
too far over in the guard. I think the guard hole needs to come out a little bit and I'm going to have to get a die grinder and grind that out. This is going to end in disaster with a repainted front guard. I thought putting the drill bit down there would make a better result, but it doesn't. Moved you so you can get a look. It needs to go into this piece and attach to the brake arm. But it needs to clear the mudguard stay. So I need to take something out of the edge of this hole and bring it this way. I'm going to put you down for a bit while I just get my coffee and drink my coffee and think about this because this could go really wrong really quickly. changed bits from a conical looking thing to a just a long cylinder and now I'm really close really close really really close a little bit more and I'll bring you back so we're looking here and the hole probably now is like a three-quarter inch hole and you can see goes up and down. Now the rod is towards the front of the hole, the front right hand side, this side. So the holes, I'm, I'm off skew if you know what I mean. So, but I don't see the hole as being a problem. I have got to bring the rod further forward too. I have a brake arm that's made for a cable end. Now I'm actually thinking of cutting the cable end off and drilling a hole to fit into the clevis that's on this rod. And yes, it'd be dangerous because this is the only um, brake arm I have, but it means that I can use the brake rod I've got. I just need to relieve it a little more up here where my finger's wiggling to get the rod to go in and out. And then I think it'll pull straight up. Now I would be shortening the brake arm by three eighths of an inch, 10 mil. But I'm guessing it will pull, guessing. I suppose what I could do is drill a hole and mount it up. Not really sure what to do here. Coffee required. Advantage of a flat tanker, you can put a nice cup of coffee on the tank. It hasn't got a hot bottom, it's a vacuum glass. I'm gonna scratch my head for a little bit longer and bring you back when I've thought a bit more about it. Now I'm fully cognizant that I shouldn't have, and you can't see much of my head because it's not great. But I did. I heated it and gave it a little tweak. Now, I tweaked it to get it to line up better so that the rod pulls straighter. And, you know, I've failed before where I've heated cast parts 
and it's always a bad idea. So I did it again. Um, not sure why, but I wanted to. So I've given that the tiniest tweak inwards. That way. Because I want to use the full length of the rod. And because the rod slides in a tube, I want it to not bind like that. When you get it going straight, it won't bind. Let me just unwind the clevis off the end. And I think I'll have enough rod space. For this to pull straight up and down. Because it needs to pull up to get the brake to operate. Up. So at this point now, I can work out, well, what's the furthest forward I can go with the brake arm and drill a hole to take the clevis and get it to pull upwards. Because now the two line up. More thinking to do. And I'm out of coffee. The tripod's not much fun to look at any of this on. Here's my tweaked brake arm. And I hit it up and, and gave a little tweak. And now the rod, this rod, can sit on top of it squarely and can slide up and down. Or at least that's the theory. Up the rod, here's where it slides up and down. Now, in reality, as I think about this, the rod has to be able to bend and move forward because it's not a straight pull up and down because this arm is on a curve. So it becomes longer and shorter as it curves. Here's the hole. I have got a little scuff here. I may end up having to repaint that guard. But the hole doesn't look too bad and, you know, no, I'd rather it was smaller, but it isn't. At least it's round and it looks okay. So this is on the edge of working. I just need to get brave and drill a hole in here, I think, to take that clevis. I don't think I can get a different clevis and stretch it that far. At least I don't think I have anything that'll fit. I'm not sure it'll look right anyway. Let's hope fortune favours the brave and that cutting the cable end off was okay to do. Give it a cool off. It's actually lots of meat there and I'm going to give that a round up now and see what it looks like. Okay, there's no burrs on that. I'm going to put it back on and have a look. I did decide that if I needed a new one of these, I'd just order a whole new piece. Um, I bought it on eBay, so it wouldn't be too hard for me to locate the part that I bought and to buy another one. And it'd be here in a couple of weeks. But... You get my theory? I'm going to draw a hole in the end of that and make that fit, um, that clevis. And then we'll see where we go from there. Here it is. Now, it could stand a little clean up a bit more. I've ground it. And here's the pieces of the clevis. I'm going to try and put this back together. We'll see how it goes. Keeping in mind, I can move the arm on the spline 
and that's not a big deal. And I have adjustment on the rod and I could make the rod shorter. And I suppose if I wanted to, I could make the rod longer. But let's see how it goes. And you're seeing it at exactly the same time I'm seeing it. I didn't test fit it. It just doesn't want to screw back in the hole. It's actually the clevis that's causing the problem. The clevis is threaded on one side and it doesn't want to go back in. Yes, it does. Maybe the hole's slightly crooked. I'll get a screwdriver. Hang on a second. I'm back. Let's just try a screwdriver. There it goes. Now, I believe all these parts were remade. I don't think they're originals. But somebody did a smashing job remaking them. Now there we go, that's kind of what it looks like. If I can get this little nut on the back. I won't lose it, because if I just put it down, I won't remember what it was. Right here, multiple spanners and products sitting around. So first thing, I'm clearing the mudguard stay, which was a problem before. and I can't tell whether something's binding or not. Something doesn't feel quite right. Don't know what it is. Um, how am I gonna sort this out? So it works. I don't know why it was binding. Perhaps it was binding when I did this up. It is binding when I do that up. And as soon as I loosen it a bit, it's not bound. It must have something to do, well, I'm assuming there's something to do with the angle of this. That when I tighten that up, it binds. What does it do? It's not tied up the top. I wonder if it's actually in the brake arm. If you remember, all this brake mechanism is untested and is brake mechanism that I fitted myself. I think that's the spring washer. I think it needs a washer underneath the cam plate for it to ride on. I think the cam plate is grabbing when it's tightened up. But there we go. I'm gonna call that a massive victory. The cam plate, not a big job. Get the front wheel out and do something about it. That is gonna work. I'm gonna be able to get a cable into here that will pull on that, that will pull on that. How cool is that? How iPod is so much better than, than on. And we can see that that is gonna pull correctly. And it does. And I think it's the cam plate grinding against the disc that's causing it to bind when I tighten it right up. Just panning back, you can see the whole mechanism. Now, it is angled forward slightly because the reality of 
this brake plate that I made fit is that I'd say the rod is in line with the actuation point. Maybe BSA had it back here and it pulled from there. I still think it's going to pull. I think it's going to be fine. I think where I lopped the end off, so I lopped this piece off, you can see how thick that was. I have just had to shave it down to get it to fit in, but it fits in really well. And most of all, that works. That's really funny. There you go. That's Flat Tank Journey for the week. I'm not dedicating a huge amount of time to the bike. I've got other projects on the go. I turn wood. I've got a family. I've got stuff going on. But like I always say, this is the real world. This is old bikes, and I've got three of them on the go at the minute. So I just kept plugging along quietly. Hope you had a good time. If you did, hit the like button. Send me a g'day, how you doing? Or tell me something new. And hit the subscribe button if you would. Cheers. Have a good time.